Okay, so we're going to jump into understanding more of the tracker. And uh, then we're going to move on to corner pinning type stuff. But I want to get just a, a basic understanding of how these, this tracker node works. And what I have here is the trackingvid.mov file within your uh, uh, project folder. And if I go ahead and just hit play, again, you can just hit R for read, obviously, and it's trackingvid.mov. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And what we have here is just two uh, little sort of like uh, black boxes that are moving away from each other. So I want you to kind of understand in this real basic, basic, almost like Pong level uh, graphic, uh, what this uh, tracker node can do when you're tracking real life elements and so forth. So let's go ahead and add a tracker node. There we go, and I'll go ahead and stick that on there. So we see if we add a tracker, right, and we'll just go ahead and put it um, again right here, and I'll just put it right on the center of that character, and this is the thing that we're looking for. There's such an obvious contrast. Obviously, if I spread this out this far, it might actually jump over to this guy, so we don't want to do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and just put it about that size. And I, I actually dropped it down on frame 24. Obviously, it created a keyframe. That's important to know. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and track forwards from here. So I'll go ahead and track. And then I'll come over here, and we'll go ahead and track this way. So you can see we have a basic track. Real simple, right? So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and add in a uh, one of our signs just for the heck of it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit R for read. And you'll find in here a antiques.gif file. And there it is. So we are going to uh, take this antiques.gif file. We're going to go ahead and uh, put it into some uh, into tracking as we kind of move through the shot. And we're going to see what happens. So obviously, if we come over here to this tracker, and let's go ahead. First off, take a look at the tracking video. You can see if I double click it, you know, the resolution here is 960 by 540. That's important to realize. So if I hit S for settings, you can see my full size format. I'll put this to uh, the format down here, which is 960 by 540. It's off the screen a little bit, but it's 960 by 540. So that's our project settings. Again, you usually do that. You hit S for settings here in your node graph, and you go ahead and make sure whatever format you're going to finish on, you're going to finish uh, put it here. So with that said, let's go ahead and just uh, hit M for merge, and we'll go ahead and basically apply this tracking information. And again, there's two ways to do this, obviously. Um, it's set to translate, as you can see here. So if I go over here, you see we have translate information. We also have a center information as well. So I can actually turn this tracker into something, or what I'm going to prefer to do with this setting is just to bake something out. So you can see export, and we're going to go ahead and do transform match move. So I'll go ahead and hit transform match move and say create. Obviously, it's not baked. It's actually linked, and hence that's why we have a sky blue color as opposed to dark blue color. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and apply that to our uh, antiques GIF. And then we will go ahead and put this background, B for background, A for a top, right here, and see what we get. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the actual play of animation. Makes sense, right? Obviously. So um, we're going to be getting into the next project, which will involve actual play shot. But I just want you to see that this is just translation. That's a uh, translation and rotation. So you can see in the match move itself, there's no, there, there is baked data here for rotation and scale, but they're not changing, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and try something like, say, rotation. So let's do that. So I'm going to come back to my tracker, put my view of the tracker so I don't see anything. And we're going to add another tracker. And you can also see this E for evaluate, right? So if I turn that off, that won't retract the footage as we're going to use it here. If I have that on... Um, as I go ahead and play through my footage, we're going to have issues, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So here's track two, and I'm going to go ahead and take that, put that right here once again. There we go. This is not a very exciting scene, so to speak, but it is what it is. And I'm going to go ahead and take that, and we'll go ahead and track forward. See it tracked forward. So there you go. We got that going. And obviously, if I take a look at my viewer, right, 
now I have something interesting. I have, if I go ahead and click on, you know, make sure they're both on now for the heck of it. Um, you can see that it's taking the, tr it's, it's averaging the translation values between this point and this point. So it's a combination of such. Now you also have what's called rotate, so you can actually choose tracker 2 to rotate. And again, all this data is being propagated from the tracker node into the transform node. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on rotate, and now you can see this very odd behavior, and that's because that's based on the rotation value of the difference between these two uh, nodes. Okay, If I want to, I can actually come in here and take another transform node just before the trans uh, the actual transform match move and I can match it up to line up with these two points. Let's go ahead and just kind of get that roughed in there like that. Now let's go ahead and play it. You guys see what's going on there? It's basically taking this point as a pivot and, and establishing the rotation value of these two. So now you don't, not only you have translation but you have rotation. You can compound that, if I go ahead and take this match move here, uh, this tracker here, go back to tracker, and I turn on rotate here, that's going to give more data. It's going to take into account the difference between this and this here. Obviously, it should be about the same, like so. And last but not least, you have what's called scale. So if I click on scale, now check this out. The distance between these two points that have tracked is going to establish the scale. Now obviously this is a little too big, so I can come back to my transform, which is sort of like an offset transform, and scale the picture down for the beginning, and I can move it over here if I want. And you can start to see what's going on here. Pretty neat, huh? Now if you were to add another point out here, okay, and it was just, you know, that point's doing nothing throughout the entire shot. So for instance, I can actually make a manual track in here. So I'll go ahead and turn off these for evaluation. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to add a track, right? I'm going to manually animate this track. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and manually move this. I've obviously set a frame, obviously set a frame at seven. In fact, you know what? I'm going to, I am going to take this track and move it up here. Actually, I go to frame zero here and move it. And by moving it, you can see it's actually creating auto key. You can manually do this sort of stuff, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So with that said, I'll, I'll go ahead to frame seven. If you wish to, you can come to your uh, dope sheet, and you can start to see the tracks that you can get rid of um, if you wish to by hitting delete. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and animate some uh, crazy movement here. So you can see we, we're getting an animation that's a little swirly here and so forth, right? And I think I'll just leave it like that. So now we have three tracks involved. And now I could take this third track and compound in translation. Let's just, just try translation all together. So I'll turn off all these. And we have translation. So it's averaging the, the, the translation X and Y, the translation X and Y, and the translation X and Y. Obviously, X is back and forth, and Y is up and down. It's taking these three together and averaging just translation. So now you can see what's going on here. It's taking these three and averaging them. I can always offset this by taking my transform, right? This, this one little transform I put over the side, and move it over here. And now it's doing the same animation. It's just been offset, right? So I can, I can offset this in any way, shape, or form with my first transform and then let the tracking data keep it in. Now, what to keep in mind about this technique? This is a very cool technique. It works really well, but it doesn't take into account lens distortion. That is the big key thing I want you to take away from this. So like we were talking about before, when you're on the edge of the frame, and this, like say, general store goes to the edge of the frame, the image, obviously, from the lens distortions is going to start doing this, right? So how do you deal with that if you're trying to stick this general store onto a st uh, actual um, store that's in your plate shot? Well, that reality is taken care of via planar tracking and so forth. Or, if you're lucky, uh, four-corner pin tracking, which we're going to get into in a minute. Um, but in general, you can see what's going on. Now I can do the same thing again. Come back to my tracker node. And now I can uh, assume, let's choose tracker 1 for translate. Let's turn off the influence of the tracker 2. 
And let's just use rotation for tracker 3. And now you can see what's going on here. If I kind of back up a little here, kind of make some space so you can see what's going on. You kind of catch what's going on here. There's averaging going on here. Um, there's also uh, the, the pivot of the rotation is based on where this is in relation to this. So think of it a line that's drawn here, right? And that line that's drawn from this point to this point is sort of like this line right here on an average transform node. It's just transforming it in a direction-based reality. And then finally, last but not least, let's come to the tracker node here, and let's just go ahead, let's choose uh, scale. See how that looks. So you can see things getting crazier and smaller and then back to bigger again as these two points um, are moving away from each other. And getting, if they get closer, obviously the scale is getting smaller. And as they get further away from each other, the scale gets bigger and bigger. Again, you can do the same thing for tracker 2. Translate. Let's just translate and scale. Let's see how that looks. There you go. So these now we're establishing trackers 2 and 3. And you can see as, it gets, as this point gets closer to this point, the scale goes down. So that's the ability to look at that. We can add a million trackers in here, and you're, you're doing averaging, but you're not dealing with lens distortion um, that would be along the edges of the frame. And that's where people who get into doing tracking with uh, things such as, uh, you know, for instance, like with this uh, general store sign, we're going to put it onto an actual old dilapidated uh, closed-down store um, where I live um, in uh, Orland Park, like Chicago area. And you will see that it actually uh, doesn't work um, if it doesn't if you do it with this technique. Sometimes when you get around the edge of the frame, distortion starts to show its ugly face, and this whole you know way of doing things goes works against you when you start having your object go off the frame or come into the shot because the distortion is heavy again around the edges of the frame as we talked about in our. Uh, lens distortion part. So just be aware of that as we kind of move through as we move through this lesson.